I, I get accused often of hating Brigham Young and it couldn't be further from the truth. For, like I tell people, I have a son named Brigham. I can't hate yeah. the, you know, my son's namesake, but, but even more, I, um, I, I, I just feel like we can view it. And, and I like to say, this is, you know, I can do my best to put myself in someone's shoes and go, this seems to be their character. This seems to be what they were doing. And, and it's okay to talk about it. And it wasn't good. And it was very, very bad. Right. But we don't need to be hateful or accusing or angry. We can just look at it honestly as historians and, and without having the emotion tied up in it. So Brigham bringing the saints um, West and establishing the the church out here and being such a force of nature was very much in service to God. Like I think that that preserved this this religion when so many others kind of faded away or got just blended into the the culture. So I can see how God used all of it, but for me, I don't look at that as good fruits of polygamy because mm -hmm. I don't think bad roots bring forth good fruits necessarily. I can see sure. that God. God works through all of it, right? God can bring yeah. Yeah. beauty through all of it. So so for me, I don't want to give polygamy credit for right. that. I want to say God worked through through people despite polygamy. Polygamy didn't didn't ruin. It. Like we like I say to people in our church, you know, so many people feel like, well, if that happened, you know, we have this black and white view. If that happened, then the church isn't true and I have to leave. Or people in the church challenge me and say, so you're saying that Brigham Young got this wrong, then how can you, you know, how can you claim to be a member of the church or, you know, like, like it has to be all or nothing. Either Brigham Young did everything right and therefore every church leader did everything right or the church is somehow invalid. Anyway, so, so that's how I look at it. I can see God working, but I'm, I'm very slow to say, oh, thank heaven for polygamy so that we, you know, because I, I think, I think that God cares about people being treated badly. I think God cares about daughters yeah. being, you know, like Jacob 231 through yeah. the end. God used Joseph Smith through um, for the gifts that Joseph had as a revelator, as a people person, gathering people, bringing um, a seer, bringing forth the Book of Mormon, bringing forth revelation, bringing forth beautiful doctrine. But Joseph was not blessed and did not have really a business mind, right? He didn't succeed in the Kirtland Safety <laughs> Society or the steamboat yeah. or the store or the, like, yeah. but God still could use him. And and then I think Brigham Young was this force, force of nature to bring the people West and God could use him that way. But I think just like Joseph didn't really succeed in business, Brigham did not succeed in doctrine. And every doctrinal innovation that Brigham brought forward or taught we have very thankfully discarded and usually mm -hmm. condemned, right? And so that's how I look at it. There is how Paul, tr Paul Reeve tries to help his readers navigate the problem of false teachings from church presidents. I'm quoting him now. Ultimately, prophets, I, I personally would say pr church presidents, but ultimately prophets are human and their role is to point their followers toward the divine. God specifically said that he called weak vessels so that we wouldn't place our faith in their strength or power, but in God's. Only Jesus Christ is mighty to save. We do not need an infallible prophet when we have an infallible savior. As Latter-day Saints, we believe in eternal progression, a beautiful doctrine that might help us to situate Brigham Young in a longer-term perspective than his views from 1852 allow. In an eternal perspective, Brigham Young is not in some corner of the eternities stuck on his racial positions from 1852. I believe that he has had plenty of time to progress, and we can too. I actually love that. I also don't believe that Brigham Young is stuck in some some spot, some corner of the eternities, still believing his teachings and views on women and on marriage. I actually personally love to believe that Brigham himself is cheering us on and encouraging and helping our efforts, desperately hoping that we are doing all we can to heal the damage from the false doctrines that he introduced.